Hi everyone, this is Simon, and I'd like to welcome you all to my living room. Now, firstly, let me apologize for the uh, kind of harsh backlighting going on up here. Um, it's not the best, uh, but you can hear my words, and that's all that matters. Now, in this session, we're going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite pieces of software, and that is MailChimp. Uh, now, in this first video, I'm going to be talking about what MailChimp is, I'm going to explain why it's important, and we're going to walk through a really detailed example of how to use the software. So by the end of this video, you should be really confident to get out there and start using yourself. In the second video, I'm going to touch on a few little pro tips, some things that you can become a slightly more advanced user. And then in the third video, if you're still interested, uh, then you can have a very quick look at some of the statistics and the reporting that MailChimp can generate for you. So let's get started. Now it's possible that some of you have heard of MailChimp before, or are even already using it. But for those of you that haven't, what it is, is really easy to use email marketing software that enables the common user to create really beautiful emails with no design experience or HTML skills. So you can see an example here of what I'm talking about. So in your inbox, when you get this beautifully formatted, visually rich content, this is the kind of stuff that you can create using MailChimp. But why is this important? We live in a digital age and like it or not, email is king. Now the reason it's so popular is that it's basically free to send and you can send it to thousands of customers. But secondly and more importantly, and unlike social media, this can go straight to your users, straight into their inbox. And so you've got the potential uh, to get through and to actually engage with a much higher number of people. Now, we've already done mail merge in this series of videos, and so some of you might be thinking, uh, can't we just use mail merge to send these emails? And in some instances, you can. And so what mail merge is great at is communicating basic information to people, data, text, and things like that. What it can't do is create these visually rich, highly formatted emails that are going to enable us to create much better content that our customers are more likely to engage with. And given the sheer volume of email that people receive every day, there are seriously billions of emails sent every day. If your content isn't engaging and stimulating and relevant, then it's simply just not gonna get read by people. One of the awesome things about MailChimp is that it's free up to a point. Up to 2,000 users and up to 12,000 emails per month. So you can get started with it, get a feel for it, see if it works for you without having to worry about paying anything. And lastly, it's delivered through the web browser, which you can find at MailChimp.com. Okay, so let's get hands on with the software and so you can start getting a feel for how it works. And so in this example, I'm gonna show you how to import your customer contacts or your customer data into the software. And then we're gonna create, design and send our first campaign. Now, if you want to, I've put a link at the bottom of the screen. You can download and use the quick start guide alongside this video. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are at MailChimp.com. Now, if you haven't yet got an account, just head up to sign up free. Uh, we've already got one, so we'll go straight to login. Now, the first time you log into MailChimp, it's gonna ask you for some personal information uh, about you and your organization to get your list set up properly. Now this question here, do you have a list of mail of emails to import to MailChimp? Uh, we've been collecting our customer data. Um, we've got a WooFoo list out in the wild, or you may have your own. And so we're gonna click yes for this option. And no, we aren't setting this up for a client. We're doing it for our own use. Now this next section regarding information about our organization is to uh, comply with international spam law. This question here about your industry, so you can um, specify the industry that you're operating in and MailChimp will compare the performance of your campaigns to other businesses operating in the same industry. 
We're in the UK, so we're going to choose GMT. We're not going to bother uploading a profile photo at the moment. So that's it. Now we're in here, the first thing we want to do is import a list, a list of customer contacts that we can then use as the basis uh, for a campaign that we send to them. So just click import your list. So we're going to call our list newsletter subscribers. It doesn't really matter what you, what you call it, uh, just as long as it's, uh, it enables you to identify who the contacts are and what the origin of them is. Now it's important to set this from email. This is the email that obviously the emails are sent from and anybody that wants to respond to the email uh, by replying to it uh, will send to this address. So here it's just asking for some text to remind people about how they got onto your mailing list originally. Okay, you signed up on our website to receive updates about what we're up to and where we're headed. So that's cool, we've got our contact information. Again, this is a requirement of spam law. And this final section regarding notifications, um, this is where we can specify how frequently we want to be notified about changes in our list. Uh, and that might be new people subscribing or people unsubscribing. Let's ask for a daily summary to start with. And we want to create our list. Okay, so we've set up the structure of our list now. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually uh, import the data from somewhere. So we've got three options here. Um, the option we're going to choose um, is the second one. Now we're doing this because um, we've been using a WUFU form and the format that we can download data from WUFU in is as a spreadsheet, so an XLS or an XLSX file. So this is where we actually need to go and find the data that's in our spreadsheet. Fortunately, I've got a copy of that on the desktop, so let's open it up. And so if any of you have been using Wufu or any other similar service to capture customer information, your data should be looking something like this. All we want to do is select the uh, customer details, uh, the name, email, mobile number and the other information they've given us, and we can import it all into MailChimp. So I just click the first name on the list, and we click the bottom right cell in the bottom row. And just copy that and head back to MailChimp. And then simply paste that data into the um, cell where the cursor is here. Now it looks like it's a bit of a mess. Uh, it looks all over the place. Don't worry, MailChimp's very smart and it'll straighten our data out for us in the next step. Now we need to. Uh, tick this box saying I understand that my Billy plan may be automatically upgraded if we exceed the, the free threshold but uh, the free threshold remember is 2,000 names um, and so you'll have uh, you'll certainly be well aware of whether you're exceeding that when you get close to that point. Now that we've ticked that we can go to the next stage. Now in this step we need to tell MailChimp what each column of data is. So starting at the left hand side here the first column we can see is people's first name. So we just click this uh, grey box and choose first name and then save. The second column we can see that this is the surname from our data so we just choose last name and then click save. The third column is email address and it's guessed that already so again just click save. This fourth column uh, is the mobile phone number and you can see here that there is no um, available column name for mobile phone. So all we have to do here is select new column name. And we're going to call this one mobile. And the field type, we're going to choose phone. And save. Now these next three columns, um, if you remember back to the session that we did on uh, Wufu and capturing customer information, these were columns that we set up 
that enabled our customers to tell us the type of information that they were interested in receiving. And those were, I want to hear about general news, I want to hear about competitions, and I want to hear about events. And so let's go ahead and save those columns. Again, there's not a standard column name here, so we just choose new column name. And what I'm going to call this is interest news. And that's going to be a, a text field. So save that one. Same thing here. New column name. We're going to call it interest competitions. And save. And the final column, we're going to choose our call interest and events. And save. Okay, so it's telling us that all columns are matched and we just have to click next to finish. Now before we import the subscribers, there's one final thing we have to tell MailChimp and it's asking us down here, are these people we're adding, are they subscribed on our list? Are they unsubscribed people or are they cleaned email addresses? And so these people who have subscribed to our list. So that option is selected already. Let's just click import. Dismiss that message. Okay, and here we can, we see our list. So everybody's listed here. Everything's matched up nicely, the first name, the last name, the mobile number. We can see those people that are interested in receiving news, receiving competitions, and interest of um, news about events. So there's our list. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, home page. So we do that by clicking on the monkey. Now we can see here that uh, we have imported our list. So great start on that. It's even told us we're doing a good job. Nice work, MailChimp. Um, now this, the next thing we want to do is actually create a campaign ready to send to our customers. And so it's as simple as clicking create a campaign. Now it's asking us, um, do we want to send the newsletter to our entire list or do we want to send it to a group or a segment? Uh, we aren't going to worry about segments right now. We will have a look at those before the end of this presentation, but for the moment, let's just send something to the entire list. Okay, so whenever we start a campaign, we need to give MailChimp some information about the campaign. The first thing it's asking us for is a name. So we're just going to call it October Newsletter. Our subject is going to be you're invited to a party. Now the email subject when you're doing email marketing is really, really important. You've only got a few words in which to really convey to the reader exactly why they should be interested in opening your email. People nowadays are hit with hundreds and hundreds of emails and so it can be a really effective way of communicating but you need to give yourself the best chance of getting in front of people's eyes and one of the ways that you can do that is by having a really engaging subject line. Now MailChimp uh, sends a lot of email, uh, they actually send about 600 million emails a day and so they've actually uh, provided some guidance on how to write a good subject line. And you can access that by clicking through here. So we aren't going to bother going into the subject line research now, but just know that it's something that's available to you. Another awesome thing is that there's emoji support. Um, and so there's some guidance there on using emoji. Uh, just make sure that your subject line makes sense without them. Um, but I'm a big fan of the emoji, as you might have guessed from uh, looking at the slides that I've been preparing. So let's pop in something there to support our party uh, subject line. Okay, the from name is going to be just my name. The from email address is going to be the address I've set up. Um, we're going to ignore this option. Now this option here, personalize the two fields. So this is a really important one. Uh, one of the ways that spam filters uh, filter out mails sent to people is that if there's nothing in the email to suggest that the sender knows who they're sending it to. Now, one of the ways that you can indicate that you know uh, the person that you're sending your email to is by including their full name in the to field for your email. And so when we looked at our list, in our list we've got the person's first name, we've got their second name and we've got their email address and so we can give our email a great chance of getting through to the recipient um, by including that information and the way that we can do that is by using these things called merge tags. 
Now, what a merge tag is, it's exactly like uh, the merge field that we use when we're doing a mail merge. And so it's the piece of information uh, that is going to correspond to uh, a piece of uh, customer information in our database. And so here, if we click on the merge tags, it'll open up a window where we can see um, these are the tags that we can use to incorporate information from our mailing list. So we can include the email address, we can use their first name, their last name, their mobile number, and so on. And so the two bits of information that we're interested in here are the first name and the last name. So what we can just do is we can copy those two fields. So these are the two merge tags that are going to use the first name and the last name, paste them here. And so when the person receives the email, it's going to include their first name and their surname in the to field. Now, the last thing we need to do on this page is to configure tracking. And so um, I've mentioned before, but one of the great things about MailChimp is that it's going to give us some really detailed statistics on how effective our campaigns are. So how many people open our email and how many people click on the links in our email. So you can see here we have these options, track opens. We definitely want to track how many people open our newsletter. And these two options, track clicks and track plain text clicks, well, we don't have the options to turn those off on the free accounts. But these are really, really handy things to know, so that's fine for us. The other options, um, they're probably outside of the scope of this session, so we're fine to leave those unclicked. Lastly, there's a couple of options here for social media. And so... Uh, if you want to um, tweet about your campaign after it goes out, either through Twitter or through Facebook, then you can configure your accounts to do just that. Um, we aren't going to bother with that in this presentation. So come down to the bottom and we'll just click Next. Now I've already mentioned it, but one of the most awesome things about MailChimp is it enables us to really easily build these you know, highly formatted, very visual emails that we can send out to our customers. Now there's a couple of ways we can do that. We've got the uh, option where we can just choose a basic template and then populate it with our own images and text. Or we can use one of their uh, pre-existing themed templates which takes care of a lot of the work for us. Now here if we scroll down you can see there are a whole bunch of different templates for different purposes. And so you can have a look at the drop down here and they've divided them up into categories. And so it's really easy to choose the kind of thing you're looking for. I love food, so let's have a look at the food templates. Now we can start with one of these you know, existing templates, which makes it really easy to build something that looks amazing without having to spend a lot of time and energy doing that. Just to show you what I mean, uh, using this sort of first template here, the farmer's market one, you just hit select and it opens up the template for us to edit it uh, to make it sort of look how we want it to. And so to work with a template is very, very straightforward. All of the content is designed in sort of different content blocks. And to edit one, you simply just click on it. And so should we wish to, you know, you can just change the information that's in there. And then select save and close. It's the same with any images in the template. You simply hover over the image, click edit, and then you can choose to replace the image. You can edit the image that they've included there using the sort of inbuilt editing tools, such as cropping it, and then save that. And so there's a whole bunch of inbuilt functionality which makes it really easy for you to make these changes without having to uh, get too involved. So let's save that. Now it may be that once we've started playing with this template, we realize that we actually don't like it that much or it's not gonna be really suitable for our needs. And so we can just go back to the template page and choose another one. So we could choose another existing themed template, something which has got really rich formatting, or we may decide that we want to have a lot more control over how our newsletter looks and we want to build our own. So let's try doing that. Now it's just giving us a, a warning saying, look, if you've already started building one template, they're going to try their best to convert them over, but it may get messed up a little bit. That's okay with us.
Now here's our bare bones email template. On the left hand side of the screen here, uh, this is going to be uh, the live preview of our, of our newsletter. And on the right hand side of the screen here are the different content blocks that we can add to our newsletter simply by dragging and dropping them. So the first thing we're going to do is to sort the text of our email out and we're going to kind of build the email around the wording of our newsletter. So to do that, we simply hover over the text block here, we click the pencil to edit, and then we delete the text and add our own wording. So we can just paste that. Okay, so the wording I've chosen there for our newsletter is going to be an invitation to our newsletter subscribers uh, to a party to thank them for being part of our, uh, a customer of our business. So you can see there that the text is pretty boring at the moment. We haven't got any formatting, so we can do something about that. Okay, so we're going to have a burger party. So let's, if you want to apply some formatting, you just come to the styles here and you can choose a heading. Likewise, you can add bold and other formatting if you want to do that. Okay, so we've got our basic wording in. Now we can add an image. Now one of the great things is you can uh, either drag and drop images into MailChimp or you can import from a URL. So if we're going to do that, we need to actually find the URL of an image that we can use. So let's do a quick image search. I want a burger. That looks pretty good. So just copy that. Go back into our newsletter and import that image. Great, okay, looking good so far, newsletter. Okay, so we've got our big header image here. We've got the text for our newsletter, Burger Party. Um, we've got the details. Now the one thing we want people to do, and this is something to bear in mind whenever you're, uh, you're sending out newsletters, is you often want to have a call to action. So you want the uh, receiver or the reader to do something. And so in this instance, we want the reader to RSVP uh, to tell us that they're coming. So what we want to do is you want to add a button. So let's go over here and grab a button. We'll drag it over, let go of the block there. And so it's saying buy now. Well, what we actually want that to say, so if we clicked on the button, we'll click the pencil and it'll give us the option to edit how that button performs. So the first thing we want to do is change. So the first thing we want to do is replace the wording on that button to something a bit more uh, relevant, such as, a spot. Now obviously because it's a button we need it to link to a web address so we're going to link the button to a, uh, a, a web form, a Wufu form where people can tell us that they're coming to the party. So let's go back into Wufu. Now you can see here I've already created a form. I'm going to click view and so you can see what the form looks like. So basically these are the details of our party, name, email, attending, yes or no. Um, so let's go back to the form. Now to link the button to the web form, all we want to do is click on this share button here and then we get the link for the form. Copy that. We come back to MailChimp. We paste the link to the form here. Uh, it's going to link to our button and we're going to save. So you can see there that the button that's probably a little bit close to our text. So we can just click in here, add a return save and close. And so that's a bit more nicely spaced now. Okay, so as far as building our campaign goes, it's a very basic example, but it's got all the elements um, of a newsletter. It's nice and visual, uh, there's a really clear message, uh, there's a call to action, it's creating some value for our subscribers. So I think we're ready to send. Now before you send a newsletter uh, to your list, and that may be 10 people, maybe 12 people, it may be 5,000 people, it could be 25,000 people. It's really important to test it and make sure that everything works properly. And so there's this great option here, preview and test. And if you choose number two on the list, you can choose send a test email. And I really encourage you to do this before you send any big campaigns.
So I'm going to pop in my email address. And we're going to send a test and then check that when we receive it. Okay, so the email has just arrived. So uh, you can see there it's got a test in the subject line. So we know it's a test. Our emoji is looking really sweet. Uh, so let's open the email up. Now, some pictures were not downloaded. So let's uh, download the pictures. And I would say, so far that looks pretty cool. Everything's displaying as we wanted it to. Um, we can click on the button to check that it's working. Yep, that's taking us through to our RSVP form. So far, so good. Finally, let's just check these buttons down here. So if we hover over these, we can see actually we haven't linked those to our own social media accounts yet. So we've got two options. We can either go and link them or we can delete them from the email. So let's just go back and have a quick look at that. So here, it's the block we have with our social media accounts. Again, we can either go in and link those by putting in the actual addresses for our different social media accounts, or we can just hit the trash can and delete this content block. I think that's what we'll do. Okay. So I think we're ready to actually send this into the wild now. Okay, so it's giving us a checklist to go through before we send our campaign. So list, it's giving us a tick, it's going to our 11 recipients. The subject line is good. Replies are going to go to the QALP training address. Tracking is activated. Uh, it's an HTML email, meaning it sort of uh, has images and richly formatted text. Uh, default header content, so it's giving us an X here, so this is something we need to resolve. So let's click that. Uh, now you can see here, what that means is that when you receive email in your inbox, you often get a tiny little preview of the content, and that's this wording here in the top of the email. So this is something we need to add in. Read on for an invitation to our party. So we'll save that, and again, you can put in there whatever you want. So let's go back to next. So it's telling us we haven't included social cards in our campaign, so they're those social media credentials that we deleted. So you can choose to include those, but you don't have to. And finally, because we're on the free plan, it includes this thing called monkey rewards in the footer of our, um, of our template, but we're okay with that because we aren't paying for the service. So I think we're ready to press send. Now it gives us one last, uh, I guess, check to make sure we know what we're doing. Again, because we're only sending this to 11 people, it's not the end of the world. If we were sending this email to 55,000 people, then we'd want to be really clear that we were uh, knew exactly what we were doing. So we're okay. Let's press send now. Okay, so we've successfully sent our campaign, which means that this video is almost done. Before I go, as always, I've got some help and guidance for you. Uh, I've put a link to it there. There's heaps of really helpful information online about how to use MailChimp effectively. So that's the end of this video. Now remember, if you want to know more, I have got a pro tip video. Uh, and in that video, there's going to be a couple of really useful things. One is going to be how to seamlessly integrate and automate uh, your WooFoo list with your MailChimp account. And another one is how to set up segments so you can send uh, targeted communications to a small piece of your entire list. And then the third video is going to be on the stats and insights that you can get into your campaigns and their effectiveness using MailChimp. But that's all for now. Bye-bye.